Hello YouTube, this is me Timothy from Ultimate Manga 38 and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a switch or switcheroo in Blender, whatever you want to call it. So, first thing you want to do is go into front view, numpad 1, and move your default cube, default cube would actually go right here on the side. Next thing you'll need is a circle. Fill it in, press OK. Also, make sure that you're in texture mode because it can be flipped over like that, which you don't want, especially if you're making a really serious video game. So now flip this in the x axis 90 degree, and you might want to duplicate your lamp here. You'll want two planes. Make sure that your cursor is centered. Two planes. One on the top and one on the bottom that's flipped over. You'll figure out why later on. So the one on top, you'll go down here to our buttons tab, press material, Add new red. The one on the bottom, do the same thing, but instead of making it red, make it green. So now there's a red one on the top and the green one on the bottom. Shift click the two planes and shift click the circle. Control P, make parent. Now those are parented to the cube, and you want to make another cube above them. Size it down so that it could actually fit on top of the planes. Picture mail received. Hmm, got picture mail. Um, so everywhere the circle moves, so does the plane. So now that the planes are moving, make this cube up here, go down here, make it dynamic and bounds. It doesn't matter. Right click these planes, the red plane, we'll go down to property and our logic buttons and name it red. Then go down here to the green one, do the same thing but name it green makes sense but you really don't have to name it green or red you can name it like an action or something because it's not only for color it's for actions and stuff almost like when Link takes out his sword and puts it back in on Legends of Zelda when you press A or B I mean that's like the best Legends of Zelda game ever but back on the subject, make sure you're in frame 1, make sure your circle is selected, press I and rot. Go to frame 10, you want to rotate it on the Y axis, 180, and rot. So you're on frame 10. Go here to this bigger cube, which is where this one comes in, make sure you're on frame 1. Make it red in our materials buttons. Make sure you're down here in the materials tab thing. RBG. Go to frame 10 and make sure that this cube is turned green on frame 10 because the green is on top. And down here, RBG. Some people may see where I'm going with this, some people may not. So, now let's make sure we have everything. Yes, we do. Right click on the circle and make it that when you press space, the circle plays as IPO and make it ping pong as well because we want it to keep flipping around. So space, I make sure they're connected to IPO from frame one to frame 10 
ping pong. Wow, that lightning is scary. Um, thunder, wow. First time I ever did a tutorial in, the, in a thunderstorm. So, now you see what's going to happen. That cube falls on, it flips over, but hey, that cube's not supposed to fly like that. So, here's how you fix it, because it's not even doing what we're supposed to be doing. Make sure that you have this cube selected. Go to frame 20, at least. Frame 20, and location. Add. I know I'm just jumping from thing to thing. That's what it seems like right now. But really, all of this has a reason. Make it that when you press space. Press space. It'll do frame 19 and frame 20. Because you can't do the same frame and make it play. So you want to play the frame right, right before it or right after it. So, now it does that. Make it that when this cube, now make sure your cube is still selected. That's what we did all this stuff for. I mean like all the property naming and stuff. Make it that when that cube has a collision. Let's go back to frame one now since we're done with all the animating. When that small cube up there has a collision with red. What is going on? That small cube has a collision with red. It'll send a message called red. So connect those. Go over here. Message. Red. And add another sensor controller and actuator. And this one will be when that small cube touches green. So collision green. If I press M one more time. And that's frame. No, we're not going to do the frame, so we're going to do the message. Message green. So now, all of that has happened. And you're wondering where we're going to go with it now. Right click on this bit cube, which is what we're really trying to affect here. Make it that when message red comes, And message rate comes. That this cube will do the IPO of one and two, and it'll just play. And when message green comes, because we made these messages a few seconds ago. When message green comes, I'm trying my hardest to make this as simple as possible. I don't think I'm doing such a good job. Alright, um, when message green comes, you're going to make it frame 9 and frame 10. And just let it play because if I go to frame 10, this cube will turn green. So I think I covered everything. Let's see. So when that small cube up there touches the red plane, the bigger cube turns red. Well, duh, it was already red, so you guys probably don't believe me. But it touched green, and the bigger cube turned green. So it's like the small cube is like, hey, big brother, change color. He's like, okay, I'll do it. So that's exactly what happens. That's what the switch does. And that's why I said it's kind of like Legends of Zelda. Because you can switch things with the exact same button. Don't ever have to change the button, but you can if you want to. So you'll hear... Woo ha 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 ha. Dang, I laughed and you probably didn't even hear the thunder. So you'll...
probably be seeing me using the switch a lot in a few of my games so I hope that this tutorial helped you <clears throat> and I hope that you all go on and continue making games and stuff and yeah so that's it for this tutorial I'm Timothy from Ultimate Manga 38 peace out YouTube